This week on Big Thunder Podcast, Disney is stuffing Genie Plus back into the bottle in favor of a new, simpler FastPass system. Will it make your vacation less stressful or more stressful? And Universal dropped more spooky details for Dark Universe and Halloween Horror Nights. Meanwhile, Disney is already looking to get merry and jolly, but are their latest party announcements truly a gift or are they lumps of coal? Plus, we're celebrating Christmas in July with a game inspired by everyone's favorite part, of the festive season. All that and much, much more. Buckle up! Hey everybody, it's time to hop aboard the Big Thunder Podcast. Wild this podcast in the wilderness. Yeehaw! And here's your hosts, Bo and Abby. Welcome to the Big Thunder Podcast, where we round up all the buzz out of Disney and Universal. We're your hosts, Bo. And Abby. If you want to jump around, as always, there are time codes. If there's a specific news story you're looking for, if you want to hop right to our Christmas in July game, uh, check out the time codes into the description. But, but before we begin with the roundup, uh, I do think we need to take a moment to remember uh, a fallen friend, uh, an icon who will truly be missed. This is, of course... The fresh fruit waffle sandwich from uh, Sleepy Hollow. I didn't know where Kingdom. we were going with that. Yeah, uh, just a moment. A moment for the fresh fruit waffle. We only got to have it once. Yes, but uh, it was memorable. It's it, and it's one of the few treats we've had at Magic Kingdom that we have like tried to recreate at home and fairly successfully. I think you actually started making that at home before we even went. Yeah, that's how psyched I was I know. for it. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, it was like a beloved tree, and for whatever reason, I think I can tell you the reason why they got rid of it, but do you want to... So it was... Product for, shortages? For, yes. Yeah, so for the people who don't know, this was a fresh fruit waffle sandwich with a chocolate hazelnut spread mm-hmm. topped with bananas and strawberries, strawberries and blueberries. Mm-hmm. They have now replaced it with... Uh, it's no longer a sandwich. It's Mickey Waffles. Uh, And now you can either get one that has the chocolate hazelnut spread with bananas, or you can get the waffles with the strawberries and blueberries. So I'm sure someone crunched some numbers somewhere and was like, I understand this is the most beloved quick snack we have here, Mm -hmm. uh, but we could get more money out of people by forcing those people to buy both waffles, and then they try and make their own. The Mickey, though, I think it... So it's a Mickey head-shaped waffle now. Before, it was just a circle that you'd, like, fold and eat like a taco. Yes. I think the Mickey head is still a good size. Yeah. I don't know that it's, like, the same, like, foldability. Yeah, but they're losing less fruit every time. Yeah. And, you know, they're a chocolate hazelnut spread. Not Nutella. Definitely not. Definitely not Nutella. And they, but the other, the other treat was the spicy chicken waffle mm-hmm. sandwich. They also got rid of. Yeah. Which the I think more people loved the fruit one, so they're yeah. talking about that more. But yeah. Yeah. They also announced on the same day, conveniently, that uh, the Tiana's famous beignets were came early. Trying yeah. thinking we'd all be too focused on how great those beignets are, too excited about that news, we wouldn't notice them taking away our beloved fresh fruit waffle. Uh, but I we know. noticed. But a lot but of we the... we noticed. A lot of the people, I don't know that they love the new beignets. That's true. Because they're like croissant Yeah. So. Yeah, I have heard a lot of people say like, if you've had beignets, they're not Beignets. Good. Yeah. Uh, all right, but should we finally get into the roundup? Sure. So I think the biggest news uh, out of the last week or so, and there's been so much news, has been uh, the, the lightning lane change. Yes. Genie Plus is dead. Well, dying. Get back in that bottle, Genie. Yeah. Well, Genie Plus was never really received well yeah. by Disney goers. I think it meant well. Mm-hmm. It was intended to be a very nice thing to use to plan, but... It became just too much. Yeah. Like, so what they're doing now is they are switching from Genie Plus to a new Lightning Lane multi pass and Lightning Lane single pass. Yes. And so the multi pass will be like when you would purchase Genie Plus and then all day long you could stack and add your rides in. Mm-hmm. And then the single lane is for the fancy. Rides. Yeah. So, so the rides that you'd have to pay an individual 
fee to yeah, ride. They, they, that one I think has had a couple name changes because it, it was called like an individual ride attraction and then they became bit individual Lightning, Lightning Lane. Mm-hmm. And now it's Lightning Lane Single Pass. Yeah. And like originally it was two rides per park. Uh, and then they chopped it down to just one ride per park, except for Magic Kingdom was mm-hmm. considered in that uh, that tier. Yep. And so you could do a standby line if you wanted to for some of them. Most of them. But then other ones, the only way to ride it was to... A virtual queue. A, a virtual queue or pay for it. Right. So, so, yeah, big change. Yeah. And so what's exciting, so with this change now, you can pre-purchase instead of waiting until the day of... Waking up at like 7 a.m. Yeah. And that was so hard. That was another part that was hard. So in order to get those virtual queues or to purchase Genie Plus, you'd have to, you could wake up as soon as like midnight to buy Genie Plus, but then at 7 a.m. the virtual queues open, which I guess you'll still be waking up to do virtual queues, but it won't be like as dire. Um, And so now you can purchase them before you even leave to go on vacation. So if you stay at a Disney resort or a good neighbor hotel of Disney, you can purchase it up to two weeks ahead of your trip, which I think is nice because then if there are rides that are down Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, you kind of have a better feel once you get closer, you have a better idea of what you want to do and can plan out. So when booking in advance, you can also book your entire trip. You don't have to book like day by day. Yeah. So similar to when you do dining reservations, you can just like get it all done yeah. with and then you know what you're doing and you're spending. Hopefully, my my hope for this is that people can now spend less time on their phone like obsessing yeah. and just like enjoying the but, parts. But you only are, you are only getting three rides yes, to start you, with. So you, you will need to hop on your phone at you some point. You will, but it's less like, oh my gosh, we have to get this rider. It's going to ruin my vacation. Yeah. And like I'm in a mood about it. And mm-hmm. it's more like, oh, what's open right now? Let's right. go grab that. Yeah. Like it's because your top three, like one of the things we talk about at Mini Vacay when we book clients is like when you go to a park, pick three rides or three shows, three attractions, three experiences that you have to do. Mm-hmm. Make sure you figure out a plan for those, and then everything else is just extra. Yeah. But, like, I feel like this really helps with that now. Mm -hmm. So that is exciting. And then if you are not staying at a Disney resort, if you're doing, um, like, an Airbnb or or staying elsewhere, you can book three days in advance. Mm -hmm. So there's higher risk that maybe those top ones would be sold out. Yeah. But that's not to say day of if you go in and... Yeah, Fiddle, and, and you'd still be able to do the ritual queue or yeah. wait in line. Yep. So. so it'll be interesting. So it goes into into effect July twenty fourth, mm-hmm. and so it'll be fun to see what happens once it's actually up and has been running for a couple months, especially over like the holidays, mm-hmm. and getting to see like what crowds are like and how yeah. people receive it. All the Lightning Lane single pass rides are the same ones that were individual Lightning Lane attractions before. before. Uh, you know, we had talked, I had, I had assumed that once Tiana's by adventure opened, that, that was going to get transferred over, but it, it's not, it's part of I can't a standard that. multi-pass. Yeah. They're sticking with Tron and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train as the Is it because they draws. can move people through it faster? That would be my assumption. Because I don't, I just, I, I was very surprised at that. Yeah. But. And especially if you think that like Tiana's by adventure is a longer ride mm-hmm. than Tron, you like know, 20 minutes, uh, did they say? I think, well, from start to finish, I think it's about 10. Like, from oh. getting into the boat to out of the boat is probably about 10 minutes. But, like, Tron is closer to, like, what, two minutes? seconds? Yeah, it's, like, two minutes. I thought someone said it was closer to, like, an 18 to 20 minute ride. Maybe not, though. Hmm. But, yeah. And maybe they're, like, just thinking, you know, it's weather, it's more weather-based with getting wet. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But... It'll be interesting to see. So how it works then is once you purchase, if you decide to purchase the multi-pass, the, the Lightning Lane multi-pass, it's going to be a tiered system of the rides. Mm-hmm. So some rides you can choose, like the top rides, you can pick one, and then you can pick two in the next category. Mm-hmm. So when you purchase your multi-pass and you are able to start making reservations in advance, each park has the tier. So in the top tier, you can pick one ride. And then in the next uh, tier, you can pick up to two. So you get three total going into it. 
once you check in to your first ride, though, that's been like the Genie Plus as we know it or formerly knew it. You can start picking new rides for the day. So at Magic Kingdom, the rides that fall into the top tier where you can only choose one is Big Thunder Mountain, Jungle Cruise, Peter Pan, Space Mountain, and Tiana's uh, Bayou Adventure. Yep. And then once you've done it, you can book or checked into it, you can book another one. Your first ride yeah. of the day. Well, like It once doesn't necessarily get, have to be those, does it? I would assume once you... Well, I'm going to have to cut this out Well, now. no, you don't have to cut it out. This is very real. But is we it... We'll find out once it's in... I just assumed it was like right now how you know you make your first reservation. Yeah. I, and once you scan in, you can scan the neck. I would assume you have to check off your top tier ride before you can book another top tier ride. Ooh, that would be tricky. That could really make me upset. We'll have to see. <laughs> we'll have to see what happens. So out of those, I would probably book, well, never riding Tiana, but like I would pick Peter Pan. Yeah. It's the longest wait. Yeah. I don't know. What would you pick? Uh, well, Big Thunder Mountain, obviously. Oh, sure. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. And then obviously. At, sorry. <laughs> and then at Epcot. You can pick from Frozen Ever After, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, or Soren. Mm-hmm. I would probably definitely go for Remy or Frozen. Yeah. Those two are going to sell out much quicker than yep. Soren would. Yep. And then out Hollywood Studios, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, Rock and Roller Coaster, and Slinky Dog Dash. So there's a that's like that's the all majority the of it. It's like Tower of Terror, it's not Aliens from Rolling Saucer, Toy Story Mania. Star Tours. Yeah. And that's it. Those are yeah, the ones there's that not are many, not. So, yeah, those are all heavy hitters. I would probably do Slinky Dog or Mickey and Minnie. Mickey and Minnie, yeah. Uh, I, w- I would think I would go Slinky Dog. Yeah. To make sure, because I feel like that'll go, get booked before. Yeah. And then uh, there are no top tier rides at Animal Kingdom. Yeah. They're all just multi pass mm-hmm. standard. So. Yep. It'll be interesting. Yeah. There's so many questions because we have, we have quite a few clients booked. You know, for after this goes into effect Mm -hmm. and it's like, I'm very stressed not being able to give them like the solid information. And so, yeah. yeah. And then just as a, as a travel planner, like, is this now your responsibility to book the rides for them? I know. And that. I would assume so. I would assume so too, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah. And then what happens if they want to change their mind? So many questions. Yeah. Can't wait. Because, yeah, and because there may be, you know, there were times like people go to the park and they get to the park and then they decide they want Genie Plus while they're there. Mm-hmm. They see the ride times. But like, but I mean, for us who don't go there, I'll get it no matter what. For sure. Like, I, I need that 100%. security knowing that I'll get to go on my rides. And like, if it's like a cold, terrible, dreary day and you have a Tiana, like, I'm still going to go get wet. And yeah. like, I don't care. But people, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah. So exciting yep. changes. Yep. Uh, all right. So across to the other park to Universal. They uh, finally announced officially the Ghostbusters house for Halloween Horror Nights. This is going to be at both Universal Parks. So Hollywood and uh, Florida as they both get the Ghostbusters Halloween Horror Nights house. As you know, there's precedent for Ghostbusters being at Universal. <coughs> uh, Ghostbusters Spectacular was an opening day attraction, lasted until 1996. So the Ghostbusters do have a history at Universal. I wish we would have that. I think that More would be More Ghostbusters. Fun. I agree. A bone-chilling new specter has escaped from an ancient artifact, and he'll stop you cold. The Ghostbusters must team up to save you and the rest of the world from a second ice age. That's the plot of the thing. Uh, there was originally a Ghostbusters themed house back in 2019 that was based off the original Ghostbusters film. Okay. This new one is based off of the one most that was most recently released, Frozen Empire. That was good. And, yeah, we did enjoy it. It was good. It was good. It was good. My, I would go to that. Yeah, I know. I don't you would. think that would be so scary. I I'm could sure probably it would. handle that. Yeah, it's it goes back into the thing I don't like about the um haunted houses based on movies is I feel like I would be going through the whole time being like, I remember that. I remember when that happened. Yep. That's my favorite part. Halloween Horror Nights is a separately ticketed event on select nights from August 30th to November 3rd. So you need a special ticket to Halloween Horror Nights uh, in order to experience this. Mm-hmm. And there's some good packages that Universal's offering, too. 
I can't tell them to you off of the top of my head, but there yeah. are there are. If anyone's interested, factors. they could reach out through Instagram or Facebook. To many baby. Yes. Uh, all right. Sticking with Universal, legendary composer Danny Elfman will be contributing original music to Dark Universe. Tim, so Danny Elfman, you'd know him best. He does. He's worked with Tim Burton a lot, including but not limited to Batman, Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhands, Nightmare Before Christmas. He also was the singing voice for Jack and that. So he's done a lot of scores. He's also done the Simpsons theme, uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films. Wow. Uh, Men in Black. He did Fifty Shades of Grey, the score for that. So like he's that's a good score. He's one of the premier names in film composing. Wow. Uh, so yeah, so he's he, gonna do it for dark, dark universe. universe. So I okay. would imagine this is like the ambient music you hear throughout the land, plus like what that. you hear on the rides. Be so spooky. yeah, very excited for that. I think he did a score for. Um, they did a Wolfman remake probably about 10, 15 years ago or so, um, and he did the score for that. So he, I mean, he's worked in this world before. He did the Dark Shadows movie which was a Johnny Depp Tim Burton collaboration which was uh based on an old vampire show. Yep. So they talk about dark shadows on Gilmore Girls. Okay. Also my only real knowledge of Wolfman other than what you tell me is from Full House when DJ watched was it DJ or Stephanie? I think it was DJ. Watched it. Yeah, I was, which she wasn't supposed to. See, now I'm surprised because they did like a whole parody episode of The Wolfman on Boy Meets World. So I don't know. Yeah, I remember that too. But I, I remember it more from Full House because Uncle Jesse really scared Steph. It must have been Stephanie. Okay. Unless it was both of them. And maybe Kimmy. Okay. Kimmy Gibbler. Okay. Keep moving on. And wrapping up the roundup, we've got breaking news. <laughs> we do. Breaking news. Uh, Rock and Roller Coaster is opening up ahead of schedule. Well, when you don't change the theme. Uh, it was, uh, by the time people hear this, yes. it will have opened the day before. So it opens... Monday the, the 1st? Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Who did it? Someone on the internet was very mad that they did not retheme it to the Goofy movie. I've heard... Yeah. I have never heard that. Oh, well, so that originally was my pitch. Oh, and then, we've been and then I was like, the oh, the Muppets would be, because the Muppets is a better one. But my first thought was Powerline. Okay. I never, yeah. but they, but they, I think they assumed because you've been finding Max and mm-hmm. Goofy at Hollywood Studios more. Well, really yeah. Max, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, Goofy. Sometimes yeah, good, but like we yeah. even saw Max. You see Max dressed as Powerline. Yeah. But the, well, you gotta think like, so the premise of the Goofy movie is Max. That's very cute. You're like, no, it's not Max. It's Max as Powerline. Well, there's two. You could see either of them. We saw when we saw Max at Jollywood, he was dressed as Powerline. But you can see Max in his normal attire. Anyways, the premise of a goofy movie is Max secretly trying to get to the Powerline concert. Isn't the premise that of Rock and Roller good. Coaster trying to get to an Aerosmith concert? Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's an I easy plug and play. Yeah. I still say Muppets are be- would be better, but like doing roller coaster here in eye to eye, that would be cool. I better stop. I'm going to copyright struck because that sounded just like it. How many times do you think a Goofy movie has been played in our house in the last week and a half? The youngest one's a big fan at the moment. I wonder where she gets that obsession with watching things over and over again. Mm Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that in the UK pavilion at Epcot, you can find Bridgerton information? That's all I'll say. All right, well, this is our Christmas in July episode. We are wearing our Christmas shirts, and we'll get to that Christmas Christmas party news in a moment. But first, if you want to experience them for yourself, Dark Universe, Epic Universe, Rock and Roller Coaster, Halloween Horror Nights, or any other Disney or Universal adventure, the people should contact... Mini Vacay. I didn't like how I said that. Mini Vacay. I didn't <laughs> like that either. Here on Big Thunder Podcast, we like to keep things as real and authentic as possible. And one hard truth is that for as amazing and magical as a trip to Disney or Universal can be, planning one can be a little intimidating and sometimes even frustrating. What are the best parks for my family? What are the best places to stay for my budget? Do I really need to wake up at 4 a.m. two months before my trip to book dinner reservations? It can definitely be a lot but that's where Mini Vacay can help you. We are certified Disney and Universal travel planners who specialize in taking the hard stuff off of your plate. 
We love waking up at 4 a.m. for Disney stuff. And not only are our services completely free to you, but when you book a vacation package with us, we'll send you a $25 gift card. Mini Vacay is a part of Gateway to Magic Travel, an authorized Disney vacation planner and Disney earmarked agency. Check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram to get the ball rolling on your next magical adventure. Or you can also see all of our information at minivacay.com. What's this that I hear about there's an awesome deal for people uh, booking trips in November and December. There is an awesome deal. So Disney came out with a uh, promotion this last week that we were able to apply to a couple different clients where you can get up to 30% off your stay, which is amazing. And it's the highest discount they ever really do. And not all resorts fit into that, but like some you still get like 25% off, 20% off, etc. But what is really cool is if you have a four-day uh, ticket plan, like you plan to go see all four four parks or even more than that, you get Park Hopper for free, which is like a really cool upgrade. For sure. And not only that, but there are other deals at this exact same time that if you have the Disney Visa credit card, like TM, I forget the official title you're yeah. supposed to say, you can get a free dining plan. Ooh. And the credit card is like a points card Mm -hmm. and then you also can get like by having this credit card you can get like up to 10 percent off food and merchandise okay in the park so there's like a ton of like stackable deals right now if you want to go to disney this coming holiday season yeah i think they're they're like disney is like starting to unveil they're like i hear you talking about (laughs) <laughs> that other place, but look at all of this. Yeah. Come see us. So yeah, lots of cool stuff. Yep, yeah. and perfect for the holiday season. Absolutely. What a good gift. Do you know what I want for Christmas? What? I would love to go to Disney and go to the UK Pavilion. <laughs> so my feeling about it is I always get very nervous when they announce it because I don't want anything to change. Mm-hmm. Because I hate change. Yeah. But then when I see it's exactly the same, I'm a little disappointed I would that they agree didn't with that. do anything. I agree <laughs> like, with I that. can't be pleased. Yeah. I'm just like, please don't. Mm, they didn't. Yeah, mm. they didn't do anything different. Okay, well, I guess. Yeah. But you better not take that gingerbread cookie away. So we're talking about Mickey's <laughs> Very Merry Christmas Party, uh, which is on select evenings, November 8th through December 20th from 7 p.m. To midnight, guests can answer at 4 p.m. Will yes. You, you want to tell us more about what people could find? Yes. That's- so if you, this is a separate ticketed event, mm. which means if you've already purchased a ticket to Magic Kingdom on one of the days that a Very Merry Christmas party happens, that does not mean that you get to go to the party. You mm. have to buy a separate ticket. And by getting this separate ticket, it's a VIP event, which means that you get special treats and special experiences that you don't find at the park on a normal night. I loved Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Mm -hmm. And here's why. So you can enter the park as early as 4 Mm p.m., even though the party itself doesn't start at 7. So you're going to be with the common folk (laughs) for a couple hours, and it's just going to be kind of like a normal time. But then, basically, once it gets close to 7, Disney starts, like, butterfly netting people that don't belong. Not really. But, like, they they have a very efficient system. I cannot imagine... How stressful it must be oh, yeah. to be in charge of the party and getting the people out that yeah. don't belong. And then you basically have like a VIP Magic Kingdom experience with lower crowds, lower wait times, and then everything is just like Christmas magic everywhere. Yep. One thing I would say is, you know, if you're thinking of going to Disney during that time but not going to the party. Mm-hmm. It, it's not a bad idea to go, like, say, go to Magic Kingdom on a day that there's a party that night. Because, yes, the park closes earlier. Mm-hmm. So you're losing less hours that mm-hmm. way. But, like, if you're not a close, or close the park down kind of person anyways, mm-hmm. those parks are relatively slow on those days because there are the most people are avoiding them because they don't want to lose those hours true so you know if 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 you're not if worried about missing out on time there at the end of the day yeah it might not be a bad idea yeah if you're like a strategy person like if you have both if if you are someone that wants to go to a very merry party i don't recommend doing the day because that is a long yes. day yeah and you can get so much done 
with the lower wait times. You will kind of have to make a plan on what's important to you. I'm not saying you'll be able to do everything in that time, but if you are a person that does not enjoy Christmas or does not enjoy nighttime at the park or does not enjoy like that, it would be the best day yeah. to go because of that very reason that yeah. so many people will know that they can't stay for fireworks or know they can't stay for the evening parade. Mm-hmm. So true. My favorite things about the event is on Main Street, you will have Snope, which is Disney's magical snow mm-hmm. that comes out. You can have free cookies and free beverages at different cookie stops throughout the park. Yeah, we still talk about that gingerbread cookie that mm. was at uh, Pinocchio. Pinocchio Village House. But last year, they didn't, they moved it. So, like last year, they, they switched up where the cookies were. Yeah. And some years they offer hot cocoa and eggnog. Last year, it was just hot cocoa, but it is good cocoa. Yeah. It is not like, the free cocoa you get at the resort. Yeah. It's like... You'd think hot cocoa in Florida wouldn't be good, but it's pretty good. It's delightful. And that's the other thing, is Florida in December is like... It's like the perfect <laughs> weather. Uh, Especially coming from the Midwest where yeah. it's already like quite chilly. Yeah. Um, okay, so what else can you expect? The other part is there's a special parade... And fireworks, it's Minnie's Christmas time fireworks that it, you can only see the show at the Christmas party. You can also do a dessert party. However, I would not recommend yeah, that. Yeah, we, we typically don't. To, yeah, we yeah, talked about that these before. Especially ticketed events. No, at a normal Magic Kingdom night, I loved our experience with the dessert party, but not yeah. at this. Um, there's also different stage shows with Mickey and other Disney characters that you can find at Cinderella's Castle. There are special meet and greets with Mickey and friends with their special Christmas outfits. There is a frozen holiday surprise with characters that plays out at in front of the castle around 8.15, but always check your app because sometimes things can change. And those would be the frozen characters. Yeah, so where it's like a Elsa, sing-along. Mm-hmm. Olaf. Yep. And then Club Tinsel Dance Party is back. Is the Club Tinsel That's the outside Dance one. Party outside? Yes. Where it's like Stitch? Uh, well, it's in, like, the Tomorrowland area. Yeah, but I was thinking last year they Stitch have, came on stage. They, probably. But don't quote me on that. And then the Disney Junior Jingle Jam at Cosmic Races Inside, and it had, like, fancy Fancy Nancy, Nancy and all of them, I yeah. think, are there. Vampirina. It's just j- little kids just jumping around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're really jingling and jamming they're, in there. They're jamming their hearts out. And then the other special thing is on certain rides, there are ride overlays, so Jingle Cruise turns in, or Jungle Cruise turns into Jingle Cruise. Yep. And then Space Mountain has like Christmas. Yeah, we really liked the yeah. the Christmas overlay yeah. for it. Um, there's also Tomorrowland Speedways it has red and green lights and the Mad Hatter Tea Party. Red and green. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the teacups had a, a nice overlay, but yeah, yeah, Jingle Cruise and Space Mountain I think are the the, the like the main yeah ones. the draw. If they switched Haunted Mansion. Over like they do at uh, at Disneyland, Haunted Mansion turns into a Nightmare Before Christmas theme. Yeah, people would lose their minds. Yeah, and then of course all the other rides have low wait times, so that's another yes. reason to book a so, uh, Christmas party. Yep, when we went to the Christmas party, we got to ride like we walked on to Big Thunder Mountain. We did we do. Uh, yeah, there's a little wait for Big Thunder. It wasn't quite a walk on. It felt like a walk on. Yeah. But yeah, like we, it was, we walked on to Pirates. Yeah. Walked on to Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion. Um, Peter Pan. That was my first experience with Peter Pan. And yeah. And it like stole my heart. Walked on to Small World. Yeah, we did. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah. So. Uh, over at Hollywood Studios, their Christmas party, this is the second year they're doing it. This is Jollywood Nights. This is uh, Disney's classy Christmas party, or at least that's kind of how they promote it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are, you know, wanting people to dress up a little bit, um, going for more of a Roaring Twenties vibe. You don't have to, but they, you know, You would feel out of fun. place, I think, if you didn't. Yeah, they are saying they recommend you don't wear heels. I saw so many ladies looking like I would last year we got to go. We were very lucky. We were very spontaneous. Yeah. And I picked out the best white sneaks yeah. for the occasion. Cause the idea of wearing anything but sneakers at Disney, I just Yeah. Yeah. Um this goes from seven thirty to twelve thirty AM. Uh, but you can get into the park at six. Yeah, it's not as 
long yeah. as Christmas, and they really did not let you in that early. Oh, yeah. We thought, we got there early thinking maybe they would secretly, especially since it was the we're last, the last night. night. We were like, this is going to be unhinged. There's going to be no rules. Yeah. And no, nope, there's still one. Uh, all right. So I'm going to re- go through what's returning. And then I'll hit you with what's new. Okay. Okay. So back again, Holiday in Hollywood. That's the Muppet show. Muppet show. The show that has the Muppets, uh, but also has uh, Tiana, Belle, Minnie, and Mickey. Also back is the What's This sing-along. That's the Nightmare Before Christmas sing-along. It's um, marketed as a sing-along, but I, I, every time I watch videos from there, it doesn't seem like anybody's really singing along. Mm-hmm. They're just enjoying the show. Mm-hmm. They put it, there's some performers on stage and then they go into the music from the movie and there's, you know, you're supposed to join in, but most people don't join in. Mm-hmm. And there's a cool Jack Skellington puppet and I think Oogie Boogie pops up. I think he's on I think stage. So too, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. There's also Jazzy Holidays at the Hollywood Brown Derby. Mm-hmm. So if you want to go and enjoy some classy Christmas music while you have dinner, that's there. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of mean griefs with characters. Uh, the Disney gang is there in their classy Christmas outfits. Uh, also, Phineas and Ferb, Max Goof as Powerline, Santa Stitch, Santa Duffy, and the uh, Rescue Rangers of Chip and Dale are there. They're back. Is that new? The Rescue Rangers? Nope, they were there last oh, time. Oh, I don't remember that. Well, they added so many characters at the end. They, like, none of these were there the first couple of nights. Yeah. They really, after a p- <laughs> poor reception early on, they really had to pivot within, like, a week. Yeah. Uh, Dance Party at Pixar Plaza is back with Edna Mode and Frozone. The Twilight Soiree at the Tip Top Club is back. I, I wish we had stuck around a little more there, but yeah, that one was the, I think, the versus what they marketed it as versus mm-hmm. what it was, I think was the biggest Let change. Down. Yeah. yeah. They, it kind of, they, they marketed it as this big, like, swing and dance party, and it was just like wonderful performers mm-hmm. in one spot while everyone stood around and drank because pre-mixed cocktails. Because it was so cocktails. small. Yeah. Uh, still a good time, but yeah, still a good time. Wasn't what they, not what they said. It. The Gertie cookie is back. That's the Gertie shaped sugar cookie with a slight hint of mint mm-hmm. that you can get uh, from the Gertie uh, stand. I don't remember tasting mint. Yeah, I, it was a faint hint. Yeah, of mint. it wasn't like overpowering. Now the question is: Yes, is that Thanksgiving dinner popover going to be back? No word. That yet. was good from Fairfax Fair. It was only like seven dollars, and it was so good. It was a nice little popover that had all your Thanksgiving treats in it. You could also get one called Just the Sides, Mm -hmm. which was like mac and cheese and uh, collard greens. Was it mashed potatoes, too? I think so. But the one we had was turkey and mashed potatoes and cranberry, and that was great. Yeah, it was was delightful. All right, so here's what's new this year at Jollywood. Yes. Uh, So we've got a lot of new characters. So Jose and Panchito from The Three Caballeros are going to be joining... Uh, joining the party over in Animation Courtyard. I don't know who they are. They the are the they... three caballeros. It's like Huey, Dewey, and Louie. No. Oh. Okay. How far back do you want me to rewind on these characters? <laughs> <laughs> these are characters that were created back when Walt was given money from the South American government to come down and make what were essentially glorified tourism movies. Uh, they've been since been you know lauded in the history of Disney. They're one of the earliest um, Disney animated films. Uh, Saludos Amigos being one of them. Uh, Anyways, those characters have been ported over. They now reside in the Mexico Pavilion on the uh, Grand Fiesta Tour ride. It's Donald and his two friends, uh, Jose and Pachito. If you watch the new Donald Duck's cartoon, DuckTales cartoon, they are known as Donald's um, college band. They're his friends from college. That's adorable. Also, <laughs> also at Jollywood, uh, Bo Peep and Lotso are going to be at the entrance of Toy Story Land. How would you feel with Lotso? Well, he's a villain. I know. Yeah. Would I be like, I want to hug and smell your strawberry fur? Or would I be like, no, sir. Probably. No hugs for How you. dare you? No hugs. Uh, then Tailspin characters, Baloo and King Louie are going to be there. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then kind of the new event they added, uh, this was a dazzling skating spectacular over on Hollywood Boulevard set to your favorite holiday tunes, taking the grace and skill of international champion skaters in an awe-inspiring twist on the traditional ice show. So like an ice skating show I would love to see that. Do you think it'll actually be on ice or do you think it'll be like skates? 
I think it'll be ice. I would think like a fake ice rink. So they're going to put up an ice rink. Where? It's, well, I guess I just assumed it was ice. I know. I assumed it was. A twist on the traditional ice show. Okay. I thought so, too. There might not be ice. That's where the little, because I was thinking about this, too, and I'm like, there's no way they could construct an ice rink to be removable. Yeah, you're right. And it would have to be so big for them to do, like, the kind of tricks and stuff. Yeah. Like, where would that go? Yeah. Uh, all right, so that's that's Jollywood. Those are your Christmas parties. I would say, I know Jollywood got a bad rap last year, early on. Yes. From the people who went. But I, as people who don't go all the time, I and had a great time. And went just for this. And went just, I, had a, I had a really fun time there. I did, too. Like, I understand the people who go all the time and maybe are a little jaded and maybe are a little, aren't still impressed by be, just being there. Like, we are still impressed by just being there. Yeah. Uh, I can understand where they wouldn't have liked as much, but I I had a great time and I would recommend yes. Jollywood. And it and they it sounds like this year's even better. So yes, and if they bring back that pop over, yes. And I have been asked, you know, between the two parties, which one should you pick? Yeah, and I think it really does depend. I think if you have kids, Cr- yeah. Christmas Merry Very makes more sense. But, like, we had a lovely date night yeah. at Jollywood. I would still take my kids to it. It's not like they wouldn't have fun. Yeah. It's just, it's like a vibe. Yeah, I think they would have more fun at... Christmas at, party. At, yeah. yeah, over at Magic Kingdom. Um, I will say, though, Jollywood ticket prices stayed the same. Mickey's Very, yeah. went up. Christmas, yeah. Mickey's Magic Kingdom Christmas party went up. That's another thing, too, like... Jollywood doesn't give you anything for free. Yeah. You don't get treats or drinks you get last year we got to leave with I an think ornament. you get a cookie on the way out this, this time. year you get a cookie so um, but that's not like and you and at the Magic Kingdom party you get in it's a longer party it's much longer yeah over at Mickey's very Merry Christmas party if you get in four you could theoretically stay for eight hours if you're doing Jollywood you go at six and you're there for six and a half hours mm-hmm. so you it's a longer party with free cookies and cocoa um but a parade it, a fireworks show yeah like, more you like, get more for your money, right. but it is more expensive. Yeah, in Jollywood, it's like, but if you're someone who like wants to walk through an empty Batu and yeah. like hop on Star Wars rides or Toy Story, like there's other benefits to yeah. it. Yeah, where you're not so focused on just like the party elements. Right. So uh, if you'd like to purchase tickets, can I share that? Please do. So if you would like to purchase tickets and you would like help with that, if you are a guest. Staying on Disney property, you can purchase tickets the day this podcast comes out, which is July 2nd. And if you don't have a reservation yet, we can get you one. And then it's just a $200 deposit. All that we can talk about. But it's exciting because you get to get in before everyone else. So if you do not have a, a resort reservation, you have to wait till July 10th. And then certain dates could be sold out. So... A bonus of that's another perk of staying on property. Yeah. Uh, last thing, shameless plug, but also <laughs> not even a shameless plug. It's just good information. Uh, last thing before we head over to the Christmas game, I feel like we'd be. My remiss. God, we still have a game. We still have a game, but I feel like we would be remiss in not talking about what Epcot has to offer during the holidays. This is uh, not a specially ticketed event. This is just part of your normal Epcot day, and that's yes. the International Festival of the Holidays, uh, which runs November 29th to December 30th. There you get, they have festive food available for purchase. It's not complimentary. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the cookie stroll, which always seems like so much fun, going to various uh, booths or places throughout Epcot to try a new cookie from the country. Uh, they have the holiday storytellers, so that's characters dressing up as whatever festive character that country represents, telling you that land's history. Typically uh, representing like a Santa Claus-esque person. Right. Uh, and then, of course, you can meet Santa. Then there's the Candlelight Processional, mm-hmm. uh, which is you, when they have a celebrity narrator come and share the story of Christmas, accompanied by by a 50-piece orchestra and choir. Abby, what's the best yes. part of Christmas? <sighs> the feeling. The feeling? It's the best part of Christmas. I I'm think so. I'm sorry that's wrong. The correct answer is <laughs> Christmas movies. <laughs> to celebrate being- Christmas movies are the best. To celebrate uh, being halfway to the holidays, we're playing a game called Soundbite Cinema. Ooh. I have taken audio clips from various Christmas-themed movies, decoms, specials, and shows that can be currently found 
on Disney Plus with the Hulu bundle. I'm assuming just normal Disney Plus, you'd be able to find these, but I just want to preference this. That Is it like last bundle. year when they had the audacity to remove Home Alone, like uh, December 1st, but then like by December 3rd, it came back? Yeah. Um, there's also a bunch of Lifetime movies on there if you've got the uh, Hulu bundle, a lot of Winnie Cooper movies. Uh, anyways, I've gathered the audio clips from various Christmas themed shows, movies, decoms, etc. It's up to you to determine what the movie is based on this audio clip. Okay. There are 14 clips. Okay. You will get five points for every correct answer. <sighs> plus a bonus three points if you can get it in the first three seconds. You need 49 points to win the game. Whenever you're ready. Okay. It's uh uh, a Christmas Carol, Mickey's Mickey's Christmas Carol. That is correct, and you got that in t- two seconds, so you get the bonus points from 1983. That is Mickey's Christmas Carol. Okay. Do I just go to the next? Yeah, go to the next one, number two. It's Santa Claus, and it's Elf. Oh, it's Home Alone. Home Alone. It is Home Alone. That is correct from 1990. Okay. However, as you can see, four seconds, you don't get the bonus Well, it, the first two seconds were a door or a, a bell ringing. I, I don't make the rules. You literally do, sir. All right. Okay. What? How, how did you guys get here? Oh, you see that tandem bike? Yeah. We rode it here from Las Vegas. Wow. That's 90 miles. Oh. <laughs> My butt hurts. Tough, tough Good one. luck, Charlie. That is- the Christmas... Ah, uh, it's, oh, <laughs> it's it's Good Luck Charlie's Christmas movie. Uh, I'll accept that. Good Luck Charlie, it's Christmas from 2011. I literally said those words. Did yeah, I uh, some, but it was like, it's Christmas? Yeah, you question? said all the words. <laughs> if you rearrange them in the right order, okay. it would have been the correct answer. That one was hard. I know. Some of these will be hard. But I won. Yes, you got okay. it. How come we don't have a beard? The Santa Claus. Yeah, that is correct. And you get the bonus points from 1994. One second. Yeah. Is well, that telling? Because yeah. that's my it's favorite. It's one of the ones that are on repeat in this house. Since October. I want this funny man. <gasps> Don't just take stuff. <gasps> but I guess that's what it's here for. Do you want to play it again? Yeah. Okay, play it again. Do I get docked points? No, you play it again. You just won't get the... Bonus I want this funny man. <gasps> Don't just Is he t- saying I want the slutty man. I want this funny man. Oh. <laughs> I want this funny man. <gasps> Hold on. I want this funny man. <gasps> Don't just take stuff. <gasps> but I guess that's what it's here for. I have no idea. Is it like jingle all the way? Sorry, it is not. What is it? That is the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Oh my god, it's Drax. Yeah. It's Drax and Mantis. I kept thinking, like, what? How? And that's where I thought, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. You're doing great. That was hard. Number six. Okay. I've only seen that play, like, once. Yeah. How horrible our Christmas will be. Nightmare Before Christmas? That is correct. And you got it within the... Two seconds. Yep. Okay, ready? Yep. The partridge is in the pear tree. We are go for launch. Vehicle? Dash away. Prep and landing. That's right. From 2009. Prep and landing. Love prep and landing. Four seconds, though. Only five points. Number eight. eight. Like a do-over? Yeah. So that this awful day could have never happened. So that I can have a normal Christmas again. It's going to be a hard one. Oliver, er... Arthur's Christmas? Nope. This is a hard one. I will tell you, it's a decom from 2021. I know. I'm out of my decom years in 2021. I know. I don't know. Play it one more time, and then just take a wild guess. Like a do-over? Yeah. So that this awful day could have never happened. So that I can have a normal Christmas again. That's the movie Christmas Again from 2021. It's a it's a time loop movie. I put the name of the movie in the uh, in the audio clip just to see if you would take it as a wild guess. I didn't. I'm sorry. That's all right. I don't know you're that s- one. You're still doing great. Okay, number nine. Get this out. Tell me what's better. 
Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. The first one's good for really little kids, and the second one's good if you want to scare people and watch them run away screaming. I don't know. To be fair, I had to pull this one from the trailer because it is hard to find clips of this movie online. Check this out. Tell me what's better. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. The first one's good for really little kids, and the second one's good if you want to scare people this person. and watch Hold them on. run yeah. away screaming. Hold on. Check this out. Tell me what's better. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Who is that ho, person? Ho, ho, Merry Christmas. The first one's good for really little kids, and the second one's good if you want to scare people. I'm getting people. like Boy Meets World, but it's them not. Away okay. screaming. Who is it? Does it give you maybe home improvement? It's Jonathan Taylor Thomas, right? That is correct. It is Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I'm you so don't sorry, get the points JTT. for this. You don't get the points for this. That's I'll be home for Christmas. I have not heard his little voice in so. To long. be fair, he was a grown up. Uh, he was a grown up at He's this time. He was like, I think he plays a college kid in this one, <sighs> trying to get to Jessica Biel for Christmas. I mean, no offense, Jessica Biel. That was a strong reaction. I was going to say just, that casting is off. I would never have. Sorry. I okay. Just tell her we'll be a few minutes late, but you shouldn't worry. Oh, she won't. Jingle all the way, but I was too distracted, but I still got it. No, that's four seconds in. You said it was, I could go to four. I didn't say that. Who said that? I thought that was the rules. If I got it, I got bonus points. If it's I Three seconds or less. Uh-uh. Put the cookie down. I don't like that movie, though. Oh, I don't either, but I like when he says, put the cookie down, which is <laughs> later in that clip. <laughs> You want me to play it? Please do. Oh, she won't worry. I mean, I'm here and... Mm, oh, these cookies! I gotta get the recipe from Liz. Put that cookie down! Now! <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, Phil, oh, oh. Phil Hartman's great in that movie as well. Because Phil Hartman's great in everything. Was great in everything. I think he's that guy for me. See that guy? See, like, look like that guy? I. What are you saying? <laughs> Who is Phil Hartman? I've seen the guy with, like, the hair. <laughs> Does he have, like, black hair? And he kind of looks like the penguin? No. We'll come back to that. But I think, he, I, think I know he is. Okay. Are we on number uh, 11? 11, yes. Who disturbs my Christmas? Please take this rose in exchange for shelter from the bitter cold. Is that Beauty and the Beast? Is it, it? Wait, hold on. It feels very Beauty and the Beast, but is it a Beauty and the Beast Christmas movie? Is that your guess? Yeah. It is Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas. Okay, first of all, I have seen this movie, but they literally like just took the movie and then made it Christmassy. They like did the same. Beginning. This is like a, I think it's like a flashback. Okay, where they're like making it like the lady came at Christmas time yeah. and he denied her. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Belle in her Christmas dress, though. At, so pretty. At the holidays in Hollywood. And the song. All right, number 12. 12. Usually this door Santa Claus whiskers. Is it Matilda? So, it is Matilda. It's, it's, uh, but it's not. But it's her Miracle on 34th Street. That is correct. And but you the get the remake. bonus points. Yes, the 1994 remake. That stars Mara Wilson. Matilda. Slash Matilda. the little girl in... Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire. She has such a distinct, sweet little voice. Yes. You lose. Right. Yours look realistic. That's because they are real. You give them a tug. Woo! <laughs> she kind of sounds like Linus. Sure. And, that, and I love Linus. Okay. All right. We have two more. Number 13. And a very Merry Christmas to you, fine sir. Oh, oh, oh. Such a delightful... Is it the Muppets Christmas? Nope. Scamp. In those days, Papa would always give me a farthing for a stick of peppermint candy down at the local mercantile. What? Why, why is that funny? Uh, I just love this one so much. You can play it again. What? And a very Merry Christmas to you, fine sir. <laughs> Such a delightful scamp. In those days, Papa would always give me a farthing for a stick of peppermint candy down at the local I don't know. Time. I thought it, it's not the Muppets. What is it? 
So this is Duck the Halls, a Mickey Mouse Christmas special. So this is the Christmas that's a special. Deep cut. Yeah. Well, you know, it's from 2016. I guess that's almost 10 years old. Um, <laughs> You're like, that was just last it year. It felt last year. Maybe it was just because the first Did time we, I watched it. Have we watched, watched it? Yeah, that's the one where Donald <gasps> oh. uh, can't go, or he, he doesn't want to go off for the winter. He wants to stay back in Christmas, and he has like a breakdown. Yeah. And, and Mickey is telling him his wonderful Christmas memories, and for some reason, he's an old Victorian boy in his, <laughs> uh, in his youth. You know why? Why? Mickey was watching Bridgerton. Uh, yeah, probably. Why do you have to hate it so? I don't. I don't hate it. It's just we can talk about literally anything else <laughs> at some point. Uh, all right, this is your last clip. Okay, it's going to be the Muppets then, because we haven't even talked about the Muppets. So do I win for the fact that we haven't even played it? You want me to guess which clip of the Muppets it is? Sure. Which clip is it? Oh, is it Piggy when Scrooge comes to the door and she tells him <laughs> off? It is. It is, isn't it? It's Piggy telling off Scrooge. Did I win? Did, how many bonus points do I get for knowing you so well? I'm just gonna play the clip now. And just therefore, go. Bob Cratchit. And therefore, you can leave this house at once. And therefore, I'm about to raise your salary. I'm oh, about to. I am about to raise you right off the pavement and onto the. I knew it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's amazing. So, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I'm about to raise you right off the pavement. I love picky. 16. All right. So I said you needed 49 points to win. You got 62 points. Congratulations. You are the winner of the first edition of Soundbite Cinema. And I get to go to Disney World. Yes. Vicariously through the YouTubers, you get to go to Disney World. If we get one comment on this video, Bo will take me to Disney World. You say that like I'm the one stopping you. <laughs> it's not me. It's the bank. Anyways, for those of you, if you're enjoying this, uh, you know, game or the show, you know, if you're having a good time with us, uh, make sure you check out Big Thunder Pod on Instagram and subscribe to us on YouTube. So, as you know, if we did go to uh, the parks this holiday season, which resort would you like to stay in? Oh, we in our hypothetical uh, journey are going to stay at Disney's Wilderness Lodge because of the giant Christmas tree. I would love that. And that's what you want. That's and, what I would love to do. And there's fireplaces with rocking chairs set up about and it's very cozy and it's a deluxe resort so you get to go extra hours at night potentially at certain parks at certain nights so you kind of have like that VIP feel without paying for it. <sighs> Yeah, I also would have accepted the Grand Floridian so you could go see that giant gingerbread house, but really, just visit that. Yeah, a lot of people actually have said uh, that staying there during that time is awful because really? there are so many people trying to get there all the time. Uh, that makes sense. That, like, the road gets congested and just, like, trying to, like, get around the, the res like, the main area because there's so many people in line to, like, see it. Yeah. And I had never considered that, that, yeah. like, logistically. Like, think about the beach club when we were there, right? Mm -hmm. It was super quiet all the time yeah. in the area. But when the carousel comes up, like, think about all the people that are just, like, in and out trying it. to visit. Sure. But, yeah, I mean, book those really expensive resorts. Yeah. Get no, but really though, the don't do the wilderness line. Yeah, at Christmas don't. Time. Yeah, don't. Pro tip: Don't go at the busiest time to the busiest place, unless you really like to be around the hustle and the bustle. Yep. All so right. You're a lady whistle down, and you need the that's going to do for the show this week. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I can't. I'm done. If you are enjoying the Big Thunder Podcast show, please go to your podcast player of choice and click on follow and then turn on automatic download. Not only will this help the podcast help us grow, but it will guarantee you that you have the best listening experience possible. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a five-star review. And in order to do that, you must download the app. Pro tip. <laughs> uh, but really, the best thing you can do to help the show grow is just tell a friend, preferably one that loves Disney or Universal or stupid games. They're not stupid. They're very fun. They're fun. but Especially they're, when you know the they're answers. They're fun, but ultimately stupid. Okay. Well, thank you for coming, and we'll see you next week. And enjoy the ride. <laughs>